close to the beginning of the film when Rose is looking through Jack's drawings, a man walks by with a long black coat down to his ankles, in the following shot you see the same man walk past only this time the coat is just below the waist in a different color from the previous shot. In in the scene where Rose breaks Jack's handcuffs, you can visibly see the stunt person not wearing suspenders as Jack does. This is an intercut shot between the raising of the axe and the striking of the cuffs. Leonardo's stunt double is noticeable in other shots throughout the film. Just as Jack begins to draw naked Rose, he draws a dark line down the center of his paper. In the next shot of the page the line is suddenly much fainter, over to the right, and he is now drawing her face. When Rose enters the cabin where Jack is handcuffed, the pillow on the berth behind the piers disappears between shots. When Jack is asking Rose to dance after dancing with a little girl Cora, you will notice that Jack's hair is down when first asking her and when the camera goes to Rose and then back to Jack that it is back up with, all nice and neat. When Tommy Ryan, one of Jack's ship friends, is trying to get to the top deck, but is stopped by metal guard rails, at the beginning of the scene he has his right hand on the rail, then in the next shot he has his left hand on the rail. When Jack and Rose have first met and are talking and walking on the promenade of the ship, in a wide shot of them, to the left of the screen stands a man with a hat in his hand talking to a lady. In the following shot his hat is on his head. When Rose breaks Jack's handcuffs with an axe, it is obvious that she doesn't hit the handcuffs on the pipe but Jack's hand. The handcuffs come apart by themselves. At the very beginning of the film when Brock is talking with the big guy, they walk upstairs turn to the right, and right in front of them is a large piece of the ship with a no smoking sign on it, yet in the following shot, the large piece has turned into a very small piece, not even enough room for the sticker. When Rose leaves Jack's company to retrieve help, and goes to return with the axe, she stops at the stairway with the rising water and wedges the axe on the bars. The camera cuts to behind Rose to show her removing her outerwear, and the axe is still being held up by the bars but it's nice and straight, before and after this camera shot, the axe is propped in the bars crooked at an angle. When Rose is trying to rescue Jack she spies a fire axe. Smashing all the glass out from the holder she grabs the axe and turns round. The next camera shot shows Rose standing in front of the case with almost all of its glass intact. In the scene where Jack and Rose are on the third class level partying with the other people in third class. When Jack hands Rose a glass of beer, how she holds the glass differs between shots. Look closely at the location of Rose's beauty mark the first time you see her at the dock. It is on the opposite side of her face during the rest of the movie. When Jack and Rose are running away from Cal to the first class dining room, if you look at the glass you can see a black screen, a light, and a crewman. Many scenes use computer graphics to show the length of the ship. Passengers were also added walking on deck. The shadows for the passengers don't always match. When Rose is lying on the piece of board and she is trying to wake Jack by shaking his hands and such, there is some frozen stuff under Jack's nose. The scene cuts back to Rose and when we go back to Jack the ice isn't there. Then the scene cuts back to Rose and the next time we see Jack he has it on his face again. The pipe on the starboard side of the forward smokestack changes by the time the ship sinks. When Captain Smith tells Murdoch to speed up the ship it bends at the top and creates a half circle. But when it is collapsing behind Cal, it has the shape of a pea. Just as Titanic breaks apart, the compass platform, seen in front of the third funnel when the lights were still on, suddenly disappears. The water isn't even high enough to have reached its aftmost legs. The white projection on the deck that held the chandelier in the lounge is also gone, and the ventilator that sits on it is flush with the deck. At the beginning when Jack and Fabrizio go to the front of the ship, you can see the anchor section at the front, yet when Jack is waiting for Rose, the camera pans up, and it's a completely different design, than from the first look at the beginning. When Jack comes to the first class door for the first time in his tux, you can see a cameraman in the glass door before he enters. When Jack and Fabrizio are at the bow, the anchor well below them is black. Along with that, the foremost railing is not connected with the rest. But when Rose and Jack are there the well is white and the railing connects. 
plus during the flying sequence the gap between the vertical bits of the railing is different in different shots of the ship. When Jack and Rose are going down with the ship, there is a man holding on to the flagpole. The man's life jacket disappears and reappears. Right after the lights go out there is a structure directly after where the ship will break that on both sides of an angled roof have four panels, each with four portholes, a skylight. After the ship has broken apart and the smokestacks are falling off, it is now open. The design of the ship's bow changes significantly while at sea. The white form on top of the bow used for mooring first does, then doesn't have an indentation on top, possibly with a bolt in the center. The point where the curved railing meets the straight side railings either is or is not connected by a top horizontal bar, and the gap between the vertical posts changes size. Another mistake on this site mentions the anchor design change, but also the metal walkway is made of tubular metal bars or flat bars that are more numerous and closer together. When Hockley and Lovejoy find the drawing of Rose in the safe, Hockley is holding the drawing which has been secured in some kind of brown manila folder. A split second later, Hockley reads the note Rose left while still holding the drawing, and even angrily squishing it slightly with his hand, and it is not in a manila folder. At the part when Jack or Rose, I can't tell which, wipes their hand on the fogged up window, they show it again in the next shot and you can definitely tell it's a completely different handprint. During the first meal on the Titanic, the one where Cal plucks Rose's cigarette from the holder, the stone on Rose's necklace changes between almost disappearing in her dress and about two inches above. When handcuffed Jack tells Rose he's glad she found he wasn't a thief, a boom mic is reflected on the porthole's glass. In wider shots it disappears. The length of Rose's fingernails changes noticeably throughout the film. In some scenes, her nails are very short, during the flying scene, and in other scenes her nails are a lot longer, when she takes the comb out of her hair right before Jack sketches her. When Rose attempts suicide she is holding on to the railing while standing on the outside, 